Shas Dovos was an Andoronian blacksmith who lived four millennia before the Battle of Yavin. Compelled by the dark power within a Sith tome he had obtained, Dovos used the instructions provided within the text to construct a set of Sith-style dark armor. Mere moments after completing the suit, Dovos was set upon by the ancient Sith spirit that guarded the tome, who erased his mind and alchemically bonded him to the armor, remaking him into the Sith warrior, Warb Null. Entering into the service of the powerful Sith sorcerer, King Amen, Null became one of his frontline fighters during the Freedan Nad uprising, which was Amen's attempt to reinsert himself as Onderon's ruler after the death of his regent, Sith adept Queen Aminoa, at the hands of the Jedi. Warb Null was slain early on in the conflict, beheaded by the Jedi Knight Ulic Keldroma. Null's masters ultimately considered the Acolyte's death a small loss, as they were more interested in testing the latent power of Keldroma. After the conflict, his remains were secreted away to the remote world of Nixta on the fringes of the ancient Sith Empire, where they would remain for nearly four millennia. Discovered during the Clone Wars by the Jedi archaeologist Ikmem Rieli and his assistant, failed Jedi apprentice Taladi Kilmamna, the dark side power of the armor seduced the bitter Kilmamna. Downing the armor and killing Rieli with Null's lightsaber after a brief duel, Kilmamna christened himself Malleus, the Hammer of the Dark Side. Descended from a long line of famous Jedi Masters, Corrin Horn was recruited into Luke Skywalker's New Jedi Order shortly after its founding in 11 ABY. While his Hakleon traits impeded his ability to excel in certain areas of the Force, specifically telekinesis, Corrin Horn grew into one of the most skilled Jedi Masters of his day. Becoming one of the finest sword masters in the Jedi Order, and becoming fluent in the execution of various unorthodox and rarely used force abilities. A noted innovator pushing the development of lightsaber combat, Horn was involved in the development of the Three Rings of Defense, the tutorial lightsaber form used within the new Jedi Order devised by Cam Solasar. When the extragalactic species the Yuuzhan Vong attacked Republic space, Horn served as one of the Jedi's top field commanders. Notably besting the Yuuzhan Vong commander, Shade O'Shea, in single combat during the Battle of Ithor, and assisting in the discovery of the ancient Vong homeworld, Zonama Sikat. After the Yuuzhan Vong surrendered their control of the galaxy to the newly minted Galactic Alliance, Horn was named to the Jedi Council, and took an active role in rebuilding galactic society. When Darth Kytus instigated the Second Galactic Civil War in 40 ABY, Corn Horn was among the members of the Jedi Council who was considered to apprehend the Sith Lord, though the job was ultimately given to Kal Katarn. After Kytus's defeat in 41 ABY, Corn Horn continued to aid his fellow Jedi in ensuing the Sith's permanent extinction though his efforts would ultimately prove ineffectual in subsequent eras. First, we will compare their physical attributes. As a former blacksmith, Warb Null was a towering, heavily muscled giant, his physical capabilities being pushed into the realm of superhuman by his bondage to his armor which further enhanced his already considerable strength in making him extremely resilient towards physical injury. However, the empowerment came at the cost of his agility, and while Noel clearly developed his lightsaber technique to compensate for this shortcoming, he wasn't without his limits. A human male descended from a Corellian bloodline, Corn Horn was otherwise a typical human male. At 58 years of age, Horn was just past his physical prime, though he remained extremely fit thanks to his constant refinement of his martial arts skills. Setting aside his good habits, very little distinguish Horn's physical capabilities from his fellow Jedi, possessing well-developed speed, agility, and strength, traits that were universal with trained force wielders. I don't think this one requires much explanation. 
While I concede to Horn possessing the speed and agility advantage due to the limitations of Null's armor, Horn can't match Null's strength or his endurance. Warb Null gets the physical edge. Now we compare them as martial artists and lightsaber duelists. A Sith warrior committed to martial arts, Warb Null was noted as a high-level combat specialist, having held his own against several of the premier lightsaber duelists of his era. His statistics in the Star Wars Miniatures game credit him as a battlefield juggernaut who specialized in engaging large groups of enemies, heavily favoring the use of wide-sweeping power blows that allowed him to strike out at multiple assailants, an emphasis that strongly suggested that he specialized in Shi Cho lightsaber combat. The first form of classical lightsaber combat, Shi Cho was the tutorial style for the Jedi Order, emphasizing simplistic blade work and disciplines. However, when elevated to its highest levels, Shi Cho became a wild and randomized fighting style, with the user's instincts dictating his or her actions. During a chat on Skype with Ready4 and myself, he stated his belief that masters of Shi Cho didn't think and that in order to truly excel with the form, one had to surrender all control and let the force take over. While I myself completely agree with this assessment, all indications are that Null did not fight in this manner, instead opting for a much more controlled and calculated approach. Warm Null's offensive technique shared a similar approach to that of Darth Vader, taking advantage of as well as compensating for the properties adherent to his armor. He would use the weight of his suit as well as his strength to slowly but deliberately smash his way through the opposition. His size and strength also aided in his focus on engaging large groups of assailants, as his adversaries would impede each other as they all tried to swarm him, allowing Null to use their own numbers against them. While this group focus suggested a weakness towards single opponents, such a weakness was relative at best, as Null would have made for a poor battlefield warrior if the best he could do was cut down large groups only to be slaughtered by the lone survivor. Also bear in mind, while he ultimately lost his one-on-one -on -one duel with Ulit Keldroma, Null was squaring off with one of the most advanced lightsaber duelists of his era. Null's true disadvantage as a practical fighter lied in his hampered agility, which itself was a major contributing factor to his defeat. I think it's safe to say that Null is at a disadvantage when pitted against agile speed fencers, whose typical strategy is to dance circles around slower opponents, due to Null's severely hampered agility. His defense followed a similar strength focus as his offense, rooting himself in place and becoming an immovable object. Due to the nature of his suit, as well as the tactics employed by Malleus, another aspect of Null's defensive technique was likely relying on his armor to shrug off hits he himself was unable to intercept with his blade, though this strategy could obviously only go so far. Despite appearing to be nothing more than a straightforward Sith juggernaut, Elements of Null's style very much transcended this archetype, the most obvious example being the nature of his weapon. At face value, his weapon appeared to be a single, long-handed lightsaber with a massive green blade, providing greater leverage and reach. In truth, the weapon housed a carefully concealed second emitter that produced a crimson blade, suggesting that Null has integrated Tracata-style elements into his overall technique. The Tricotta style was based around deception, making use of the lightsaber's retractical blade. As demonstrated by Malleus, the purpose behind Null's weapon was to allow the user to switch back and forth between the two blades in the midst of combat, catching the opponent off guard. On the whole, what we get with Warp Null is the strength and determination of Savage Opress, combined with the tactical sensibilities of Plo Koon. He approached combat very deliberately but thoughtfully, planning out his actions and moving forward. I'm not arguing that he was a master level duelist by any stretch of the imagination, as his technique had its limitations, most notably his hampered agility. 
That being said, Warb Null worked well within his own limitations and had fallback options in place to deal with the unexpected, making him a serious force to be reckoned with even against the greats of his era. Corrin Horn was hailed as one of the finest sword masters within the new Jedi Order, serving as one of the head lightsaber combat instructors at the Jedi Paraxium. Horn's skills were so formidable that even Shade O'Shea, a powerful Yuuzhan Von commander with a deep-seated hatred towards the Jedi, acknowledged Horn as a great warrior, and the former Jedi battlemaster Cam Solasar regarded him as his equal, which really tells you just how advanced his skills truly are. The most prominent form in Corn Horn's arsenal was the Three Rings of Defense, a style that he himself assisted in developing. The Three Rings of Defense was the main tutorial style for the new Jedi Order, serving as the underlying foundation to which nearly all Jedi built their personal styles. The style was a set of stances and moves that dealt with dueling at different ranges, each of the Three Rings with their own unique properties. The outer ring consisted of grand sweeping power attacks, the middle ring was tighter, faster strikes used primarily to intercept and assault as well as deflect blaster fire, and the inner ring dealt exclusively with close quarters fighting. While the tenets of the three rings of defense were based around simplistic blade work, similar to the Shi Cho lightsaber form, the three rings became a highly effective fighting style when elevated to its nth degree. However, unlike Shi Cho, which became a highly randomized and wild rush, the Three Rings of Defense greatly emphasized precision and control of one's own blade, using simplistic and methodical sword moves to work one's way inside the opponent's guard. While it isn't outright stated, it doesn't take a genius to deduce that Corn Horn was also a master of Ataru, the fourth form of classical lightsaber combat an extremely aggressive fighting style based around elaborate but disciplined blade work and a heavy reliance on force-assisted acrobatics. The form also offered training in unarmed combat and dual blade fencing, the intention being to use one's entire body as a weapon rather than relying solely on the blade. As a Three Rings of Defense specialist, efficiency and simplicity of motion were obviously major factors in Kornhorn's offensive technique. Though to his credit, he did not let this transfer into over-specialization, and was, in truth, a very dynamic fighter. Using the aforementioned acrobatics of Ataru, combined with the depth blade work of the Three Rings to evade and outmaneuver adversaries. In addition to his skills with the lightsaber, Horn was an expert in the use of unarmed combat techniques fluidly integrating punches and kicks into his lightsaber sequences, as well as fighting competently when completely unarmed. His unarmed combat skills were the result of Horn's extensive service in the Corellian Security Force, which likely points to his unarmed techniques being derived from Corellian martial arts. His defensive technique followed a near-identical pattern to his offensive. He would use the middle ring strategy of keeping his blade close to his body as well as using acrobatic evasions to avoid power blows. In a similar fashion to Warb Null, Corn Horn also effectively integrated Trakata-style moves into his technique, again taking advantage of a unique property adherent to a weapon. In Horn's case, a single-bladed dual-phase lightsaber. The weapon allowed Horn to quickly elongate or shorten his blade in the midst of combat, catching his opponents off guard, though he was smart enough not to stop there developing various other creative uses for the dual face setting. One method would be to elongate his blade and use it in close quarters, as the greater surface area of the blade made it more difficult to counter, a method he employed to great effect during a sparring session with the Jedi Master Saba Sevatin, who I just want to point out was armed with two blades at the time. That was Corrin his voice punctuated by zaps as Saba advanced on him, trying to bat his longer blade aside. The most prominent example of Horn's mastery of Trakata was his defeat of the Vong general Shade O'Shea during the Battle of Ithor. During the battle, Shea attempted to slay Horn by pushing the Jedi's own lightsaber into his face, 
and during the subsequent contest of strength, Horn deactivated the blade, causing Shea to stumble forward, where Horn then reactivated the weapon through Shea's stomach. On the whole, the best way one could describe Kornhorn's skills as a lightsaber duelist would be bringing calm to a storm. He was a highly pragmatic fencer who combined simplistic and depth swordplay with quick acrobatic blade work and backing it up with highly unorthodox techniques. And I think it's safe to say that his reputation as a great lightsaber master was rightfully earned. I find this one relatively simple to call, though I will of course go into detail and explain my reasoning for this verdict. While I've made clear that Warb Null is not to be underestimated, it doesn't take away from the fact that Corn Horn is exactly the kind of opponent that Null is ill-equipped towards dealing with. An agile speed fencer who uses precision and unorthodox techniques to better aid his combative viability. This isn't to say that acrobatics alone indicate an automatic victory over Warb Null. His defeat likely owing more to the caliber of his opponent rather than simply the deficiencies inherent to his armor. However, while I don't like to judge contests of skill in this manner, I think we can all agree that Kornhorn is at the very least equal to Ulic Keldroma in terms of pure martial skill which negates any chance of the Sith warrior overwhelming him outright with sheer power. Not only would Horn's speed and agility provide an advantage against Null's lack thereof, but like a dedicated master of Shi Cho, Null's grand sweeping movements come at the expense of precision, and his slowness to adapt to an ever-changing battle can and has worked against him, which gives the quick and depth Corn Horn a massive advantage in this contest. Both possess fallback options in the form of unorthodox techniques coupled with unique weaponry. However, Warb Null is again the odd one out in this manner. While not unintelligent, Warb Null's fallback strategies were nonetheless limited. His weapon being built to accommodate for only a few very specific circumstances. Not only does Kornhorn far exceed Null as a pure lightsaber duelist, but he has made much more creative and intelligent use of the properties adherent to his weapon, constantly developing and refining new strategies that take every possible advantage of his extending blade, making him the superior Trakata master. Simply put, he has all the tools he needs to defeat him. I award Corn Horn the edge as a martial artist and lightsaber duelist. Now we compare their force abilities. As a Sith warrior who focused primarily on martial arts training, Warb Null was obviously not a dedicated combative force wielder. Though this didn't mean he was a novice or severely handicapped in this field, it just wasn't his primary focus. Within the tales of the Jedi comics, the specifics of Null's force abilities were left pretty vague. Though his entry in the Tales of the Jedi Companion helps paint a more complete picture of what he's capable of. His entry credits him with proficiency in various Force-based abilities, some of which, interestingly enough, being indicative of master-level Force wielders. His application of Force-based physical augmentation was mainly geared towards enhancing his already considerable physical strength, which aided in the execution of his personal fighting style. Null has never been depicted employing any form of telekinetic powers, nor has he been on the receiving end of any in the midst of combat, or credited with any in his role-playing game entry, suggesting that his skills in this regard are either lacking or simply non-existent. Despite being a heavily armored Sith tank, nearly all of Null's force abilities were defensive in nature, such as Hibernation Trance, Resist Stun, and Tuta Menace powers designed to improve his overall survivability rather than lash out at an opposing force. Hibernation Trance was a meditative state where all bodily functions slowed to a crawl, allowing one's body to slowly recover from traumatic injury, such as when the Jedi Knight Kakruk used the ability to survive his battle with General Grievous. However, the ability would obviously be ineffective if the injury sustained were beyond the capabilities of the Force to mend. Like, say, I don't know, 
decapitation. Resist Stun allowed the user to shrug off the effects of the Force Stun ability, where one uses the Force to induce a canatonic state within a target and paralyze them, which points to an insanely high degree of willpower on the part of Warb Null. Tutaminus allowed practitioners to absorb or redirect surges of energy such as blaster bolts with their bare hands, and more advanced applications allowed for the manipulation of Force Lightning and in some cases the ability to catch a lightsaber blade. While the extent to which Warb Null can apply this ability is unknown, the fact that he can do it at all is indicative of highly advanced power, as Tutaminus was noted as an extremely difficult practice even at its lowest levels. His sole offensive ability was the Aura of Uneasiness, a technique he employed in every duel he has been depicted in. The aura worked by subtly undermining the concentration and focus of his opponents, forcing them to divide their attention between fighting and combating its effects. Essentially a downgraded and much less exhausting version of Darth Zana's Spells of Madness. On the whole, Warb Null possessed an advanced skill set, but rather than obliterate his enemies with almighty displays of godlike power, he used the Force purely as a defensive and supplementary tool, covering his bases and improving his survivability while letting his lightsaber take care of all the gory stuff. In my experience as a fan of the Star Wars franchise, there have been few Jedi that I have encountered that possessed a more unique relationship to the Force than Corrin Horn. He possessed an exceedingly powerful connection to the Force, However, his powers manifested in a very unorthodox fashion. Jedi of the Haklion line were noted as being born with a limited faculty with telekinesis, and Horn was no exception. That isn't to say that he was completely incapable of utilizing telekinesis, it's just that he was severely hampered in that area of the Force. As a dedicated martial artist, one of the most crucial techniques in Horn's bag of tricks was force-based physical augmentation, allowing him to perform superhuman feats of speed, strength, and agility that were fundamental to the practice of Jedi martial arts. As previously mentioned, Horn's Haklion traits severely hampered his ability to wield telekinesis, though this did not transfer into complete inability. He was capable of gathering up force energy and hurling it at a desired target, as well as lifting and manipulating objects of various sizes and weight. It's just that the magnitude in which he could employ these abilities were drastically below what was typically associated with the powers of a Jedi Council Master. His defense against telekinetic attacks was similarly hampered, his force shields being unable to withstand anything that was above what the average Jedi Knight was capable of producing. However, Corn Horn did not let this weakness cripple him. And in a similar fashion for how Darth Vader compensated for his armor by retooling his lightsaber technique, Corrin Horn compensated for his lacking telekinetic prowess by investing everything in the development of alternative and unorthodox force-based abilities, resulting in a skill set that was very much unique to him. Many of Horn's abilities were designed to compensate for his compromised telekinetic defenses as well as aid in his control of the fight. One of the most capable telepaths in the New Jedi Order, he was fluent in various forms of mental manipulation, applying the basic mind trick with casual ease and subtly implanting suggestions within an individual's subconscious. He was capable of masking his Force signature from other trained Force wielders, as well as participating in battle melds. When engaged in intense combat, he was able to take himself out of his physical body and enter a trance-like state where his senses were heightened and time appeared to be slowed, a textbook application of the battle mind ability. In addition to mastering the arts of manipulation and concealment, Horn was able to project powerful force-based illusions. While not as dangerous or destructive as the spells cast by darksiders such as Darth Zana or Naga Sadao, Jedi could still use illusions to off-balance or subdue targets without physically harming them. Horn would typically use these powers to off-balance and confuse the opposition, even doing so against multiple targets simultaneously. While not explicitly stated, it seems clear to me that Horn's mastery of illusions also served to aid in his defense against telekinesis. 
As his adversary's confusion would keep them from concentrating and gathering enough energy to penetrate his fledgling defense, though this is pure speculation. On the topic of defense, Horn was also a capable user of the Tutaminus ability as a utilitarian tool. He could absorb or redirect blaster fire with his bare hands, as well as negate the effects of force lightning. While he has never been credited with the ability to catch a lightsaber blade, he has deflected energy weapons of a similar caliber, meaning that such a feat could very well be within his scope of ability. In keeping with his focus on compensating for his telekinetic deficiencies, he has used the energy he has channeled through Tuta Menace to bolster his telekinetic powers. The enormity of this enhancement depending on the potency and the amount of energy he has absorbed. For instance, when he absorbed the energy generated by an exploding ship, he became powerful enough to generate force pushes with enough capacity to kill upon contact. While the volcanic energy coming off an erupting volcano made him strong enough to hold back a landslide. On the whole, Corrin Horn may have serious limitations as a combative force user. However, the creative and quite frankly ingenious strategies he has employed to compensate for this weakness, coupled with the wide array of unorthodox abilities he has mastered, made him a true force to be reckoned with. As combative force users, there are a number of surprising similarities between Warb Null and Corn Horn in how they apply their skills. Both are extraordinarily powerful and displayed a wider range of abilities, both conventional and unorthodox. However, instead of using their powers to batter and brutalize the opposition, they instead focused on improving their overall survivability and off-balancing and confusing their opponents, rather than attacking them directly. There is very little to say regarding their prospective skills with force-based physical augmentation, as the ability was common to all trained force wielders and only truly serves to enhance their martial arts skills, which I've already covered. As previously mentioned, both have serious limitations in the field of telekinesis, and neither of them use it freely in the midst of combat with other force wielders which makes the likelihood of it factoring into this matchup basically non-existent. While Hibernation Trance greatly improves one's ability to recover from severe injury, it can only be utilized if the practitioner entered a deep meditative state, and therefore would not be a viable technique in the midst of combat. The use of Tutaminus provides the same benefits to each, and therefore cancel out, and neither Warb Null or Corn Horn are capable of energy-based attacks in any case. What truly decides this verdict is how Horn combats Null's aura of uneasiness and how Null combats Horn's array of telepathic abilities. In his Warb Null vs. Kukruk video, Jen Sarai stated his belief that the effects of the aura of uneasiness could only be endured and not simply dispelled like the powers employed by Darth Zana. However, I must respectively disagree. We have seen instances such as the Battle of Onderon where the effects of the aura have been decisively nullified, such as when the combined light side energy of Das Daith and his allies effectively re-energized the exhausted Ulic Keldroma, or when Nomi Sunrider, a renowned telepath even in those days, pierced the aura's veil using an inwardly directed version of battle meditation. Her progress only halted when the dark side entity Freed and Nad lashed out at her. To this end, I can easily see Horn using his battle mind ability to overcome the aura's effects, allowing him to keep his attention focused on the battle at hand. Even if my evaluation of how the aura could be dispelled is completely wrong, I don't think Horn Horn would be very susceptible to its effects, as his serene and focused mindset would be very difficult to undermine. This is a man whose wife was captured by a brigade of Vong, and rather than losing it, he remained calm and focused enough to develop an effective strategy to ensure her safe return. By contrast, I feel that Horn's illusions would be an effective tool against Warb Null, as there is no indication that he could in any way dispel them, and even at their lowest levels, Force illusions still hold merit as a means of distraction aiding one's control of the fight. 
At the end of the day, what we have here are two combatants who wield the force mainly in a defensive and utilitarian manner, offensive powers factoring very little into their overall fighting methods. The few offensive abilities they do possess being geared primarily towards off-balancing the opposition and furthering their control of the battlefield, rather than blunt instruments used to batter and brutalize. But whereas Corn Horn possesses viable counters to everything Warb Null is bringing to the table, Null cannot say the same. Corn Horn gets the edge as a force wielder. Now we compare their weaponry. Warb Null wore a full set of Sith style dark armor, created through a combination of metalworking techniques and Sith magic. While the exact materials used in its creation are unknown, the armor itself was extremely durable, and was even capable of withstanding a light hit from a lightsaber, though a committed strike would cut through it as easily as anything else. Which suggests that the suit may have been lined with cortosis or ultrachrome, though not enough to make it completely resistant. The suit's empowerment of dark side energy enhanced Null's physical strength, as well as drastically hampering his agility, which was a major contributing factor to his death. His primary weapon was a long-handled lightsaber which provided greater leverage and reach, and produced a lengthened green blade. Though, as previously mentioned, it housed a concealed secondary emitter that produced a crimson blade, which aided Null in employing the Tricotta-style strategies of deception. One common misconception about Null's lightsaber was that the secondary emitter allowed the weapon to become a lengthened lightsaber staff, though this is untrue. When Malleus employed the hidden blade, the story describes the lightsaber as toggling and refocusing the power from one end to the other, deactivating the green blade and engaging the red one. Rather than calling Null's weapon a double-bladed lightsaber or saber staff, a more fitting name would be a long-handled lightsaber with two ends, rather than a true lightsaber staff, which unlike Null's weapon was capable of extending both blades simultaneously. Corrin Horn wielded a single-bladed lightsaber as his primary weapon. The most notable aspect of Horn's weapon was the dual-face setting, allowing him to elongate or shorten his blade in the midst of combat, better aiding in the execution of the Tricotta-style elements of his lightsaber technique. At its normal length setting at 1.3 meters, the lightsaber produced a silver-hued blade, but when elongated to 3 meters even, the blade would shift to purple. As far as lightsabers are concerned, Warb Null and Corn Horn employed very similar kits. Both utilized weapons that bolstered their personal fighting styles. Null's elongated handle provides greater leverage and reach, which enhances his wide sweeping power blows, while the simplistic, single bladed design of Corn's lightsaber keeps with his focus on control. Both also utilized lightsabers with radical and unorthodox properties that allowed them to surprise and confuse the opposition. While I do think the standard lightsaber is an inherently superior weapon to the light pike due to the elongated handle impeding movement, such notions are mute here. Since the weapon falls so in line with Null's personal style and doesn't appear to hamper him in any form. While neither of them has an advantage on a basic technical level as far as their lightsabers are concerned, Null's armor does provide a moderately superior level of defense. While the armor is a bit hit or miss as far as lightsabers are concerned, some protection is better than no protection at all. So accordingly, Warb Null gets the edge in weaponry. And now, the verdict. As I stated several times in this video, there are a number of similarities between the techniques and tactical approaches employed by Warb Null and Corrin Horn. Both were dedicated martial artists and swordsmen who were able to contend with the best of their perspective eras, employing very general purpose but balanced fighting styles that took advantage of their physical capabilities. Warb Null, the towering tank, and Corrin Horn, the agile speedster. Both also developed a sophisticated array of fallback options that were designed to make use of the unique properties of the weapons they wielded, whether through surprise or deception. However, while their methods and tactical approaches were similar, 
there were a great many drastic differences as well. Despite developing a technique that very much transcended the typical Sith warrior archetype, Warb Null's grand sweeping power blows, coupled with his severely hampered agility, came at the expense of precision and speed. And it's clear that if he was ever confronted by an opponent he couldn't overwhelm outright, or if his radical fallback options failed him, then he would be left at a severe disadvantage, as his own fighting style and slowness to adapt leaves him so damn exposed. By contrast, Corn Horn is all about precision and speed, using the simplistic and methodical sword moves of the Three Rings to work his way inside an opponent's guard, while using the flamboyant acrobatics of Ataru to dance circles around them, keeping his dual phase lightsaber in reserve and using it when and if the battle took an unexpected turn. There is no question that Corn Horn is the more skilled lightsaber duelist. And while both wield the force primarily as a defensive tool, Horn is more well-rounded, possessing viable counters to all of Null's abilities, while at the same time boasting a broader range of applications. Simply put, Corn Horn has greater versatility on his side, and when set against an opponent as powerful and as skilled as him, Warb Null is, in every sense of the word, eclipsed. This fight would be a short affair, and would almost certainly begin and end as a pure lightsaber duel, likely proceeding in a very similar fashion to that of Warb Null's fight with Ulic Keldroma, with Corrin Horn standing in for Ulic. Both would begin the fight in a cautious manner, attempting to evaluate each other's skill sets, with Warb Null likely being the first to instigate. After a brief exchange of blades, Horn would likely take notice of Null's lacking agility, and proceed to stagger the Sith Warrior with a Three Rings Assault, then launch into a controlled Ataru Barrage, dancing circles around Null and working his way inside his guard. It would be here that Null would likely attempt to utilize his lightsaber, though this would be met with Horn negating the weapon's unique effects with his own, and Warb Null would be cut down in short order. I declare the Jedi Master, Corn Horn, the winner. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed my latest installment of the Versus series Season 4. As always, you are free to leave suggestions for future matchups in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys later.